I'm going to have yours open flat out lately. We had no time to work on the uh, vacuum CRT projects. And when you're drilling these out, make sure there's no cracks. Because when you pull these under a vacuum, there's a crack. The bottle will implode on you because you'll weaken the glass. I'm drilled out quite well. So I'm going to uh, hopefully go around and do one of those when I get some spare time. <laughs> Train rolling there. Uh, not, nothing much else has happened. I've been playing Fallout 4. Got stuck into that. It's quite a <clears throat> quite a nice addictive game, just like a third one. The mod and the weapon mods are quite fun to do. <laughs> but yeah, it's just been too hot today. It's about 40. Tomorrow's 41, I think. It's just been too hot. Got no room behind me to work on the uh, arcade jukebox project, although the um, getting the uh, drivers to work with the, um, the embedded PC, I got, I got to get the uh, do the um, put the Zoran DVD in it and just use that to um, get to the we'll see what sort of drivers it needs. Just got to do that. Once I do that, I can uh, download the right drivers for it. Because I tried a Windows XP disk that had drivers already in it. I got a copy of it with um, SATA drivers and it doesn't work. So it must need special drivers for this one. This is IDE only, so. And it needs AHCI serial uh, IDE drivers for this board in particular. So you've got to find the right drivers for it. It's the first one I've encountered that needed actual drivers to work. So. It's just must need to find one for this board in particular. Anyway, I'm just going to do a look inside this meter. Um, uh, Wicked XC didn't really do a good detailed video looking inside it, but yeah, let's just do one. Um, Raymond, got out here in the 7th, posting me, uh, he's going to post me um, my uh, meter in the mail, hopefully today or tomorrow. It's, it's all ready to go. So I can't wait to get that nice side of Metropolitan Vickers. I'm going to test that against this meter. I'm not sure what, uh, what else has got. It's to put some other goodies in there too, so I'm looking forward to that when it arrives. Oh, smells. 34th week of 1987. There's our date code. 1987, this one. That clip comes out and that pulls a fascia off. It's already been put apart before um, Dave uh, Lee zeroed it off again. Reset it. Now for our machine man, <laughs> I've uh, done millions of videos on meters, but he hasn't, still hasn't quite figured out how to wire these up. Well, if you look at the uh, terminal layout here, you get the two centre ones joined together. They're both for neutral there. So an active in, neutral in, neutral out, and active out. There's two chunky ones here that are your load coils, and they're where your active in and active out are. Active in, neutral in only, just powers the meter up and no load. And there's two go out to your power point. As you see in the terminal cover here, it tells you how to do it. I've also I went to Redcliffe's markets uh, yesterday, and uh, I seen a nice old antique shop full of old vintage TVs, but they're not for sale. They're using them as uh, props, a shop to prop to make the shop look pretty, give it that environment. So, yeah, I can imagine the arseholes wanting to turn those as fish tanks if they were for sale. Even if they were for sale, they'd be a bloody fortune. Because uh, there was a nice old street light from the, uh, look like from the 1930s, 1940s. Quite a heavy one. And nice uh, old cast iron, had an uh, original bulb in it. It's a, um, it was Australian made, I couldn't remember the brand name it was. I should have got a photo of the label, but um, had a, what looked like a high pressure sodium bulb, had a halogen inside that, so it's a special type of bulb it takes. And also in that shop, the switchboard had an MKOSD and an M MKBOZ still in service. So that was kind of cool. And um, the little round 
Warburg and Frankie time switch and they front cover, so poor thing had no cover on it. So you haven't seen, didn't see much of those anymore. It had two Chrysler um, Delta gun, 1975. They're the first colour TVs in Australia. So they'll be, they'll be rebranded Philips K9 TVs. They had two of those. They had an Astor, two Astors. They had an old Australia General Electric, 1957 model TV. It's not about this high. It's quite a nice TV. It's about the um, same... Uh, it's made in the same era, my Apollo W101A is. That also wasn't for sale because it was all there to prop the shop up, get the shop that nice, um, that nice vintage uh, appeal. I had about, uh, I think there was about seven or eight TVs like that there. Two colour Chryslers, rebranded Philips K9s, two last stores, one console, one smaller. And that floor standing um, AGE and a little portable um, Rank Arena, rebreaded one, which is actually an EC from the uh, late 1970s black and white TV. They had some uh, Valve radios, they had a Chrysler 1181A for nearly 200 bucks, way out of my price range. But yeah, their cliffs is good for antiques because it's the first town established in this Majora district, in the oldest part of the Majora district. But, uh, I rarely even go there. I probably should if I get a chance more often. Because yeah, there's a lot of antique shops there, a lot of cool stuff. But yeah, I need to get some space freed up in my container. I probably should get a 40 footer. Because yeah, those uh, TVs I've seen there, they would be very well worthwhile fixing up and restoring. Anyway. It's all, this one's actually all plastic. Yeah, it's got a plastic um, gear train. And I, this, uh, this isn't quite as uh, soft, isn't quite as solidly built as their three phase models. All plastic there, magnetic bearings, except for the top. Plastic drive train, all plastic gearing. Yeah. Still pretty well made there. Anyway. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.